All right, guys, so I'm gonna break down my 300 blackout that y'all just saw me running and gunning with, doing some, uh, shooting some subsonic and some super, supersonic. So I've got an Aimpoint T2 on here. Obviously, I'm a big fan of the Aimpoint. It's also something that we offer on our site, and we've got some support on there for this product, some educational stuff, different things like that. I have an EOTech G33 I was using on and off, so it lets me see a little bit further. I get that first hit probability a little bit easier, so I really like that. I kind of throw it on and off this gun, move it to other guns, which is really nice, and then it's got uh, adjustments, so you can center it up with the red dot, whatever red dot you're using, with an EOTech or an Aimpoint, whatever. As you know, I set a lot of my guns up pretty much the same, and that's after five years of playing with different configurations and kind of finding what I like and what works best for me in terms of intuition. So I've got my PEC-15 at 12 o'clock, which is good for zeroing. I've got my pressure pad directly behind that white light button in front, laser behind that one. I have a Surefire M300, which is 500 lumens. If I wanted, because this gun almost always has a suppressor on it, I could get a full-size can and go past the muzzle device itself, because I pretty much never take the can off unless it's going into a backpack. So I could go up to uh, 600 lumens or even 1500 lumens if I use the M600DF, the dual fuel one, the new one that just came out. Uh, I got an angled hand stop right here. Uh, it gives me a reference point for safety. So if I am running, uh, if I'm not running the suppressor, I don't like overshoot the gun on a reload or something and shoot my uh, finger off. So it's good for safety and it's good for also manipulating the buttons for the lights and lasers. Obviously when you're running a small gun like this, this is a nine inch upper, BCM nine inch upper. Um, you're losing a lot of real estate, obviously, when you start adding lasers and stuff like that. So I'm not running backup sights on this gun. I do have a rear on here because sometimes I pull the peck off and I put a front sight on. And my big thing is I would rather focus on intuition of the controls and the things that I use for actually shooting, white light for identifying targets, a laser for allowing me to shoot accurately under nods, than having redundancies. Like I need to be able to use the equipment in the first place before having redundancies. That's kind of how I prioritize it. But then because of that, because I don't have irons, I'm running an aim point, something very reliable, something with good battery life. So I'm not running an EOTech on here. I love EOTechs, but the battery life on them just isn't as good. Uh, but obviously the new ones are getting better. Now, we have a Geisley SD3G. This is a really nice trigger. It's really fast, as you guys saw over there shooting some subsonic up close. Uh, the only thing about this trigger is it's not a beginner trigger. It's kind of easy to, because uh, the, the reset is kind of assisted. So it's, a, it's an assisted reset. And that can be really nice when you're really burning targets down, but it can also allow you to kind of bump fire the gun and kind of fire an extra round when you don't intend to. So that's not very good, especially if you're throwing this, the uh, stock or brace up over your shoulder and uh, you, you don't have very good uh, recoil control of the gun. It can kind of jump and you can fire an extra round off. So that's something to keep in mind. We've got a Radian charging handle. This is the SD uh, version. So it's got the little holes on it. Uh, so kind of help with some of that gas blowback. Uh, I haven't compared this to like a regular one, so I don't know for sure if it's helping. I'm sure it is, um, but I'm running that just because. I've got a loft folder so this gun can get nice and small. I can pull the suppressor off and then this can fit into a backpack. So then I have an SBA3, which is a retracting brace, but I leave it in the same spot and I use tape to eliminate some of the slop and then I just crammed it down onto the tape. Sling point in the rear on the law folder, sling point magpole, sling point right here. This is how I run all of my all my guns, kind of the best of both worlds of a two point and a single point. There's obviously, that all comes down to preference. If you run your sling in the front and run your sling in the rear, I can obviously move it back to here if I want, but I always run it right here. For the suppressor, I have a Surefire uh, 300 SPS SOCOM. So it's a suppressor that was designed specifically for 300 blackout. I'm sure there's some science and engineering behind that. I don't know what it is, but all I know is it's the quietest gun that I own. And it's probably the funnest gun that I own. And I was thinking about it uh, the other day and I thought, yep, it's probably the funnest. So let's talk about ammo. So I've got two different kinds of defense rounds. Basically with 300 blackout, what you have is you have supersonic ammo, which is traveling about 2,100 feet per second. So it's obviously slower than 5.56, but it's still going fast enough that you can reach out to hundreds of meters just fine with not very much drop off. Then you have subsonic ammo, which is traveling at about 900 feet per second in like a, a 10 inch barrel or, short, or less, or like 1,100 feet per second if it's a longer barrel, like a 16 inch. So I have my uh, some Hornady, uh, Hornady Black 208 grain. So this is like my defense subsonic ammo. So it's all fancy and I actually haven't used this or really shot with it. So I need to play with this a little bit. I then have some Hornady 125 grain. So it's a smaller bullet. So it's, and so it's got a little bit more powder. So this is supersonic. So I've got two options of subs for a super duper quiet. And then I also have some supersonic if I want to shoot distance um, and have potentially like more lethality. And then for my training ammo, what I have right here is I've got my MagTech. Uh, this is 123 grain. I think I pay about 45 cents around something like that and then i've got this sb stuff which is uh, i think 220 grains not sure but yeah the the feet per second uh, on a 10 inch barrel or less is 960 so it's not breaking the sonic barrier so it's just a nice uh a nice pop out of the barrel you don't have that crack of the sonic barrier because that's what you hear when people are shooting suppressed with rounds like 556 five, that's why i still wear ear pro people go why are you wearing ear pro you're shooting suppressed well just because you have a suppressor doesn't mean your gun's going to be magically hollywood quiet 
If it's still traveling over 1,100 feet per second, you're going to have that sonic barrier crack, which is very loud. And if you shoot as much as I do, that's going to cause hearing problems down the road. If you just shoot a little bit here and there, yeah, you don't need to wear ears if you're shooting a little bit of suppressed stuff. Um, obviously, if you're shooting like a 308, like a SCAR, that's still pretty loud suppressed unless you're shooting subsonic. So I still wear ears for about 90% of my suppressed stuff. But if I'm shooting my subsonic stuff, this SNB ammo, um, then yeah, I can ditch the ears. But I usually already have them on, so I just wear the ear pro. So that's 300 Blackout. There's some good videos out there there that really detail the benefits and then also some of the science behind the rounds and how they function i'm not getting into that but this is you know my, one of my setups i also have an mcx but i prefer this it's a bcm nine inch upper on a uh, it's also on a bcm pistol lower but yeah you can build one of these out for not too expensive and then obviously the suppressors go for anywhere from about a grand plus i think there's some cheaper ones out there but uh, this is the quietest gun that i own i really like it i know there's some new guns out there designed specifically for 300 blackout like the honey badger by q and i'm sure that's a little bit quieter because it's engineered specifically for this round and it's all built out and there's some other guns out there but uh, this is my basic 300 blackout which is also super awesome so if you guys enjoyed this video uh, leave a comment below of what you'd like to see, other guns you'd like to see on the channel. We'll look at that. I read through as many of the comments as I can. I try to respond to them. You guys may have seen some of that. And uh, we'll try to get back to that. Also, subscribe. we got some cool stuff coming. And I'm in town more now, so I'll try to do more videos for you guys if I'm not traveling. So take care. Train hard. Be safe.